how do you ensure that that this is really a match for for the kids that you're seeing? That's a great question, and we have a quite extensive admissions process. I am one of the admissions clerks, so it's great that you asked that. It starts by them sending an email of inquiry to the school saying, hey, I'd like to schedule an interview. I then send them a ton of information on the research, on articles that they can read, videos that they can watch, really information about the Sudbury model of education because it's so different. And it's one that involves no classes, no grades, no testing. It's very, very different than most forms of education that people have seen. So we send them all of the research first before we schedule an interview, just to make sure that they understand what they're getting involved in. Then we have them schedule an interview and physically come into the school. I give them a tour first while school is in session so they can see the things that kids are really engaged and involved in. They can see what the layout of our building looks like and different resources that we have available to kids. Um, and then we sit down and have a chat after the tour. Um, and the chat is, it's, it's as an interview, but it really is just us getting to know each other and seeing if it would be a good fit, seeing where they're coming from, seeing why they're thinking of choosing a model like ours, feeling out where the child is as far as their readiness for school here. And then it if all goes well, they still like the fact that there is no math uh, formerly taught typically and no science typically and things like that. Once they can really understand what we do here, mm -hmm. we then schedule them in for a visiting week. And that is a real opportunity for the child to come in and act like one of our students to see if they would be a good fit. For the most part, mm -hmm. our school has quite an extensive structure set up. So kids have to observe 30 minutes of our judicial committee. That's very important for them mm. to sort of osmosis in how it, how it works and how rule breaking happens and, and what happens subsequently from that. And they have to observe 45 minutes of our school meeting, which is where all of the democracy happens. Mm. It's really the, the meat and potatoes of all the voting that we do happens at school meetings so they've got to observe 45 minutes of that and then there are other things like um, monday morning announcements that's just our way of touching base at the beginning of the week as to what we plan on scheduling throughout the week if anything mm -hmm. so yeah they have to do a so certain number of things but not not too high of a demand then once that week is right, completed right. we meet on friday to um, assess how the week went talk it over how feelings were throughout the week and they can immediately enroll if it's before march if it's after march then they have to wait until the following year to enroll this is the agentic schools vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills what makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.